The following segment, Helen on 86th Street, stars my very own niece, Alex Wallace, as Helen. It was a video recorded and produced by me when she was 17 during 11th grade drama class in 2006. You never can tell. I might be nurturing a future TV, radio, or film star. I don't want to push her that way, but at the same time, I want to help her along the way as needed. She has good reading abilities, which is a good start. Here's my Ali Bob, Alexandria Wallace as Helen. I hate Helen. That's all I can say. I hate her. Helen McGuire is playing Helen of Troy in our play. Mr. Dodd says that she embodies Helen of Troy most out of the sixth grade. Well, that's great. Helen knew nothing about Helen of Troy. You should have seen her when she found out. Flirting with all the boys, really acting the part. Well, I knew who Helen was, and I am unhappy. My mother doesn't understand. Not that I expected she would. When I told her the news, all she said was, Ah, uh, the face that launched a thousand ships. So I can't play Helen. But to make it worse, I have to be in the horse. The horse. I wanted to be one of the Trojan women. I told Mr. Dodd this, and then I showed him how I could act. I got really sad and cried out at the thought of my husband's body being dragged around the city walls. And then I wailed and beat my fist against my chest. A regular Sarah Heartburn. Well, at least you get to be on the winning team. That's what my mom said when I told her about the horse. It didn't make me feel any better. It's better than being Helen. It's better than being blamed for the war. Mom and I live on West 86th Street. We have lived in the same building my whole life. My father has been gone for almost three years now. The truth is, he got struck by wanderlust, and we haven't heard from him since. Your father's on his own odyssey. And now, it's just me and Mom. At school, Helen McGuire was acting weird because I get to be in the horse with Tommy Aldridge. She wanted to know what it was like. Is it real cramped in there? Do you sit real close together? Well, it's dark, and we have to hold each other around the waist to make the horse move forward. Lucky you. Lucky me? She gets to stand in the center of the stage with a white sheet barely reaching her thighs and say lines like, This destruction's all my fault. Paris, I really do love you. She gets to cry, and she thinks I'm lucky? The other day at rehearsal, she was standing on stage, and I heard Miss Reardon whisper, That Helen is as beautiful as a statue. Old Farfel has been coming around a lot lately and taking me and Mom out to dinner. So I told Mom that I was going to Adam's house to rehearse. Old Farfel made a small laugh, the one that gets caught in the back of your throat and never really makes it out. I just want to tell him to relax. Let it out. Well, the play's the thing. We're all just players strutting and fretting our hour on stage. Mom smiled at this, and it made me wish Old Farfel would strut his hours at his own apartment instead of ours. I hate the way he's been coming around all the time. When I got back from rehearsals, Mom was spinning Argus. It's what she does when she gets in one of her moods. Argus is our dog. He died last summer. Mom can't stand apart with anything, so she keeps his ashes in a blue vase. Life is a cycle. I didn't want to talk about life. I wanted to talk about Helen. Helen, again with Helen, always Helen. You want to know about Helen? Well, just be lucky you're a warrior. Old Farfel is going to a convention in Atlanta. He wants Mom to go with him. I can hear them talking in the living room. He says it would be good for her. I know that Mom doesn't like to travel. Mom, are you in there? I'm not. I'm on new ground. It's a very different place. Are you thinking about Dad? I was thinking how we all travel differently, Vita. Some of us don't even have to leave the house. Tad left the house. Sometimes it's easier to look outside rather than in. At play practice, I watched the other girls dress up as goddesses and Trojan women. Mr. Dodd wrote this play himself, so he's very picky about the details. Tommy Aldridge got sent home yesterday because his sheet had flowers on it. They did not have flowers on the sheets in Greece. You must understand, Helen is the star of our show. Men have traveled far just to fight for her. At the end of the play, when you come on stage, the audience must believe that you really feel bad at the thought that this war is all your fault. 
Mom is out to dinner with old Farfel, so I eat alone in the kitchen from a blue and white paper cup that I remembered Mom giving me. She said, see this building, Vita? She said it was the Parthenon, and that it was a place where the Greeks made sacrifices to Athena, and that they thought that it would bring them luck. I then got an idea. I went to the back of my closet and got the letters from my dad. I then put on my white sheet costume. I thought that I should say some words to make this more like a ceremony, so I said the only Greek words I knew. Smanika maka musika. They're food words, but I said them anyway. I think about what I want. To be Helen, for my dad to come home. I know that wishes are granted in three, so I add in the chance of old Farfel leaving. It's all my fault. Helen McGuire is sick. She has the chicken pox. The show must go on. When Mr. Dodd made the announcements at rehearsals about Helen, I stood up and in a loud and clear voice shouted, The gods must have envied me and my beauty, for now my name is a curse, and I am hated Helen, the scourge of Troy. We'll see, Vita. She might still get better. <sighs> Helen McGuire recovered from the chicken pox, but didn't want to play the part because of all the pock marks that were left. Besides, she wanted to be in the horse with Tommy Aldridge. Mr. Dodd insisted that she still play the part, but her parents said that they didn't want her to feel pressured. After that, the part was mine. Tonight is opening night, and I'm so excited. Mom is coming without old Farfel. He wasn't what I wanted. What is beautiful? Beauty. Why are you always concerned with beauty? Don't you know how beautiful you are to me? Would Dad think I was beautiful? Oh, Vita, he always thought you were beautiful. Would he think I was like Helen? He would think you were more beautiful than Helen. I'm almost sorry he isn't here to see it. Almost sorry? Almost. You know, Vita, it's times like these when you think the ancient gods are going to come back to life again out of envy. What do you mean, come alive again? Don't you know? When people stopped believing in the gods, they no longer had any power. They disappeared. Didn't you know that? Didn't I get the part of Helen? Didn't old Farfel leave? I know I made all these things happen with my ceremony. I don't believe that all the gods disappeared, at least not Athena. You can't know for sure about the gods, and who knows, maybe Daddy even will be here to see it. Yeah, and maybe this time the Trojans will win the war. I stand backstage with Mr. Dodd and wait for my final cue. I spot my mom sitting in the front row, alone. Soon, I will walk out on the ramparts and put my hand on my forehead and say my last speech. Hear my supplication. Do not envy me such beauty, for it has brought only pain and despair. For this I know I will be blamed. Troy. I have come here for you to forgive me. Then, I'm supposed to hit my fist against my chest, draw my hand toward my forehead, and cry loudly. Mr. Dodd has gone over this gesture several times in rehearsal. Instead of kneeling, I stand, straighten my tunic, and look toward the audience, and speak the line softly, and to say goodbye. Well, there you have it. Over 50 hours, one of the largest and longest documentaries ever produced. For me, it was the ultimate challenge of my life, and I dedicate it to my grandfather, for he was the one that nourished those first faltering indications of interest. He set my compass. I hope he's in a place with a lush garden about him, a trusty windmill pumping all the water he needs to grow the most beautiful fruit, flowers, and vegetables ever seen. And I wonder if he has his beautiful glass house with those two or three cardboard boxes of magic. In my later years, 
I only hope that I could be as inspirational to some young person as he was to me. And to that end, I dedicate this story. If you have children that show certain signs of interest in radio, whether in electronics or program creation, nourish it. Feed things to him or her along the way that might help nourish that germ, the radio bug. You never know what they might be able to accomplish. Thanks, Granddad, for nourishing my childhood dreams. I love you, and I miss you. This is WDTR, completing another day of broadcasting. WDTR is owned and operated by WDTR Incorporated and operates on a signing frequency of 650 kilocycles. WDTR has a maximum output of 5 watts. We would appreciate any uh, reception cards that you may have that you heard the station. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Producer's note. On review of this presentation, certain production anomalies were noted. A vote was taken on how to deal with these anomalies. There were two clear choices. Use a humorous voiceover disclaimer at the end, or a legal disclaimer. It was a difficult decision to make, but after much deliberation, a group consensus was reached. On review of the production, please note. Exact times are approximate, and all times may vary. Any reference to all facts cannot be guaranteed. All names expressed are purely coincidental. Program content is also coincidental to ownership and usage. Furthermore, it is agreed that you freely decline all rights by listening to this production. Note 2. No animal testing was used in creating this production. Note 3. All above notes are approximately exact, and any reference to specifics is generally coincidental. All rights reserved, possession is nine-tenths of the law. This group decision is not unanimously supported by the majority of its members. Most wanted humor, but clearly, legal won out. Philosophically, come see, come saw. We're not exactly sure what that means, but every time we try to Google it, well, say lovey. <laughs>